Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here, bringing you another uh, awesome math video. This one on um, the derivative of y is equal to ln of x. That's right. So ln as in, uh, can someone please mow my lawn? Although I don't need it right now, there's still lots of snow on it. Um, I know it's May, but it's crazy. All right, so um, the derivative of ln of x is not actually that hard to, to find. If you differentiate this guy and... Uh, we won't because that's not the purpose of this video. Maybe I'll make another video on, on just proving it, the ln of x, it's about the derivative. The easiest thing for if, you know, it's important to know your proofs, of course, but we also need to know, for the most part, we need to know how to use these derivatives. And really, the derivative of ln of x, ln of x, ln of x, is equal to 1 over x. So it's a really simple, straightforward derivative that can, you know, come in many forms, many more complicated forms. So we'll see... I'll do a couple of examples here, and uh, let's see how it goes. So we'll start with, um, you know, a pretty straightforward example. Before we see that, um, a lot of times uh, chain rules combine with taking a derivative of ln. So some some teachers will show you this, and I show my students this, and some use it, and some don't. Um, ln of u. So basically, u could be anything. In the next example, I'm going to do u is x squared. So it's always equal to, so the derivative of ln with something more complicated inside of it that's in terms of x is equal to 1 over whatever that is times the derivative of whatever that is. So um, I personally like to use this myself because it makes these things so much easier. So maybe I'll do the first one using both uh, different methods, one that you know a lot of my students use and this that a lot of my students use as well. So let me just uh, divide the screen up into two pieces here, I guess. It's a little bit thick, isn't it? All right, so let's see. Um, so the first thing I'll do is I'll use the rule that I first showed my students when we did the chain rules, just sort of trying to sink it in. So uh, if you look here, this is inside a line function. So that's what I'm going to call my u. So my u is x squared. And then my f of u, I was going to say the f of u part there. I don't want to get in too much trouble teaching calculus. Um, so that's going to be just ln of u. And then, so my u prime, so my derivative here with respect to x is 2x, so I just used the power rule for that one. And then my f prime of u. Now this is where some of my students sort of get a little bit confused. This is not the the ln of u that I had before that I was differentiating with respect to x. So just take a note. Whoops. Oh, this is annoying, isn't it? Uh, just take a note of this is with respect to x. So when I do this here, I'm differentiating with respect to u. So this is really no different than ln of x. So I'll, what I get is just 1 over u, just like that. So when I write out my chain rule, which is y prime is equal to the derivative of f prime of u times u prime. Well, the derivative of f prime of u is 1 over u, which is... Our u is x squared, so I can put my x squared here, times the derivative of uh, u, which is 2x. And then that equals y prime is equal to you know 2x over x squared. So then I can cancel it next. I'll just cancel this squared with this x. So that leaves me with 2 over x as my final answer. So my derivative of this guy is equal to 2 over x. Now, a lot of my students don't like that because, you know, students are, are uh, generally trying to find, or mathematicians in general are lazy, and we want to try to find the simplest way to do it. So really, if you use, if I'll just write the rule again, d over dx, ln of u is equal to 1 over u times u prime. This is the rule from here. So uh, d over, du over dx is the same as u prime. So if you look what I have, my u is x squared. So I end up with, you know, the derivative, or y prime, is equal to 1 over what's inside of here, x squared, times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So this one works out, like, really simple. So I jump right to this step right away. And then it's just a matter of reducing, and we know that reduces down to 2 over x. So either way, I get an answer. You know, that's right. So whatever works for you, by all means, go ahead and do it. And generally, the rule of thumb my students use is that if it gets really complicated, they start sort of relying on this. But if it's a fairly straightforward derivative like this one is, then they can sort of go with 
um, an easier one. How much time? Five minutes. All right, let's do another example then. So this one is a pretty common example. I've seen it on a bunch of first-year calculus tests. Uh, ln of sine of x. So again, if we use our uh, a rule, so I'll just write it up again, d over dx. So you probably got this, you know, ingrained in your head. 1 over u times u prime. So in this case, my u is sine. So, you know, y prime is equal to 1 over, so my u is sine, so that sine is going to go right there, sine of x, times the derivative of sine of x. So the derivative of sine, hopefully you have your trig derivatives memorized, is cos. So, of course, this is cos x over sine x, and this is a pretty obvious simplification for most of us, I would think. Um, if you haven't done, you know, any identities, it might be difficult, but um, cos over sine is cotan of x. So there's my derivative. y prime is equal to cotan of x. So, you know, for the most part, I don't find these uh, derivatives to be too difficult. Now, there are other, are, are other types where we sort of have to get our rules of logs and use those, but we're not going to do that in this, well, this video is over, but um, I'll do that in another video. So that's sort of an intro to the derivative of ln of x. Hopefully this helps you. And um, you got any questions or you want to see a specific example, just leave it in the comments. Thank you very much, guys. Good luck.